Thank you for the uh, congregational and the uh, special uh, <coughs> singing. And uh, the last song I actually was going to ask Sam and Donna to sing that song because I'm just going to read a lot of scripture tonight. I'll make a few comments, but uh, I just really want to reflect. Uh, if you want to go ahead and start, uh, I'm going to Luke first, and then we'll be going back to Matthew, but Luke chapter 1 is where we're going to start. Uh, there's just a lot of miraculous things about the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to start with uh, John uh, about his birth. I'm going to read a little bit about that, and then we're going to go into the, the birth of Jesus Christ. <coughs> But it's absolutely amazing at all of the miraculous things that happen around the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, and I, as Paul Harvey said, we have read the rest of the story for so many years that I think sometimes we take it for granted. Uh, of all the miracles that God performed around the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we hear it over and over and over. And it's the same old story. Uh, and I'm almost 68 years old and I've heard it for 65 years plus. Uh, and I've just heard it over and over and over and over and over again. And we take it for granted uh, that this was just another birth. It wasn't. This was a miraculous birth. Uh, this was a birth like none other, none other that has ever happened in the history of mankind. Uh, it never happened before the birth of Jesus Christ. It has never happened after the birth of Jesus Christ. And we need to reflect upon that. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to touch our minds and our hearts and reflect upon the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm going to reflect just a little bit uh, upon John the Baptist uh, and uh, share with you just a little bit of uh, what happened in their life uh, before because John played a very uh, special role in uh, announcing uh, the coming of Jesus Christ. And he played uh, a special role uh, in uh, Zacharias and uh, uh, Elizabeth uh, played a special role there that I just want to read a little bit of that but then I want to get into the uh, birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Luke chapter 1 uh, verse uh, 7 is where I want to start and then I'm going to drop down to uh, verse 13 and read a little bit about uh, that birth and then we're going to get into the birth of uh, uh, Jesus, if you will, if you can comfortably stand, please do so. I'm going to read verse 7. I'm going to drop down to verse 13 and read down through verse 20. And uh, then we will uh, take a moment and let the Holy Spirit prepare our heart. Verse 7 says, But they had no child. They is Zacharias and Elizabeth, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. Uh, let's drop down to verse 13. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. You shall call his name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He shall also go before, he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient of the wisdom of the just to, to, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I'm an old man, my wife is well advanced in years. The angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. 
take a moment, ask the Holy Spirit to prepare your heart for his word this evening. Heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence this evening, we come, Lord, with a very humble heart, realizing what a miraculous scene is about to take place, unfolding in the Word of God. Starting six months prior to the conception of Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary, Realizing that you was preparing the way for Jesus through John the Baptist, through the womb of Elizabeth, but how that you had the presence of heaven, angels on the scene, speaking and using barren wombs of women that their husbands, the women themselves, had given up upon ever having a child. And God, how you performed this and how that it has come down through the ages of over 2,000 years and what an impact that it's made on the life of each and every one of us that are here tonight. Holy Spirit, I ask for your presence to come upon the minds, the ears, the eyes, the hearts of every individual that's here tonight. This is the day that we have on our calendar that says Christmas Day. As Brother Sammy has already said, that's the birthday of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would take your word, God, that is God breathed, that you would speak to the heart of your children here tonight, and that we would celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ in our hearts and in our minds. Not only today, but 365 days out of the year, we would celebrate that. But let us take this moment, this time, on this special day and Holy Spirit I pray that this wouldn't just be a same old story that we've heard over and over and over again but that you would take it and make it alive in our hearts and in our minds and let us know where we were and who we are because of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth. Thank you, God, for loving us enough that you sent him. And I pray, Holy Spirit, for you to take your word and just stir our minds and help us to reflect upon that tonight. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen. The scripture that I just read to you uh, about Zacharias and Elizabeth is the same old story that you've heard over and over and over and over again. Zacharias and Elizabeth were well up in age. I don't have the age to give you as to what the age was, but Zacharias had been praying for a child, but had basically given up that they would ever have a child. Elizabeth had given up that they would ever have a child, would ever bear a child. But an angel came and spoke to them and said, you will have a child. And we find here in the reading of this, and I'm not going to go back and reread all of it, but we find here that the angel spoke and said, that you're going to not only bear a child, but you're going to be bearing a special child. And the child is going to be a, a son. And it's just amazing to me that in both instances here of John the Baptist and of Jesus both, 
that the angel not only came forth and came out and told them the gender of the child. There was not a gender celebration three or four months down the road and they had a party and they had an ultrasound and they said, guess what? It's a boy. But the angel told them that it was going to be a son and that his name was going to be John and that they, he was going to bring great joy and there would be many that will rejoice at his birth. And he's not he's going to be great in the sight of the Lord, verse 15. He'll drink neither strong, he'll drink neither wine nor strong strong drink. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit even while he's in his mother's womb. And if you'll remember when Mary, I'm not going to read that to you, but when Mary went to visit Elizabeth after she was told about Jesus being conceived in her womb, you'll find there that the scripture said that John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost at that time in the womb of Mary, uh, in the womb of uh, Elizabeth at that time, John was filled with the Holy Ghost, just as the scripture had said that he was going to be. Can you see all of the miracles that are already beginning to take place at, around the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the, the forerunner of Jesus Christ in John the Baptist. He was the one that went out and told all of these things. He was the one that said, I'm not even worthy to reach down and unbuckle the latchets on the sandals of Jesus Christ, the man that's coming after me. I'm just out here to tell you about the man that's coming. That was John the Baptist, and that was his responsibility. But now I want to skip down to verse 26 in the same chapter, uh, Luke chapter 1, and we're going to start talking about a visit from an angel to a, a lady called Mary. It said in the sixth month, this is six months that Elizabeth has been pregnant with John. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So now Elizabeth has been pregnant with John for six months. She is sent to a virgin that has been, uh, she has been engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and her virgin, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord's with you, blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, you will bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. So this is very sim similar to the visit that the angel made to Zacharias and to Elizabeth. He, the angel has called out the gender. It's going to be a son. The angel has called out the name instead of John. It's going to be the name is going to be Jesus. And the only difference here is we're going to find here that Mary is a virgin. She is not married. She's never been with a man before. So Mary is going to find that she is in a different situation than Elizabeth was in. Said, Behold, you will conceive in your womb. You will bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there will be no end now this had to be mind-boggling to mary a lot of people thinks mary was still a teenager i can't prove to you by biblically how old that mary was some says she was a teenager some says she was in her mid-30s i can't take you to a bible verse that says mary was age 13 or mary was age 33 
I can't take you to a Bible verse that tells you how old Mary was. I don't know for sure how old Mary was, but I can tell you she was dealing with some heavy-duty stuff from an angel right now. An angel has just appeared to her. An angel has said that in your womb you're going to conceive a child. It's going to be a boy. I want his name to be Jesus. He's going to sit on a throne. And Mary was old enough to know that there was no king that had ever ruled forever. That the throne and the reign of a king would go on and on and on and forever and forever and forever. Because kings become deep throne either kings become dethroned or they live to an age that they died and their son took over but there was never ever had been before in the history of mankind that a king had come and sat down on a throne and was going to reign forever so Mary was dealing with some heavy duty stuff that an angel had just told her Amen. and what was Mary's response Mary said to the angel, how in the world can this be? I've never been with a man. That's what she said in verse 34. How can this be since I don't know a man? It's totally impossible. Can't happen. So what did the angel say in verse 35? The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is born to you will be called the Son of God. She just thought that she had had some heavy duty stuff thrown on her. Mary, don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit's going to come on you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. And the Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. So God is going to be his daddy. You're going to be conceived of the Holy Spirit. Never heard of in the history of the world before. But Mary, this is the way it's going to happen. And Mary had a lot to dwell on. And it went on to say in verse 37, but with God nothing will be impossible. And in verse 38, Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Wow. What an amazing lady. What an amazing lady. But there's another partner in this situation. Remember, Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph, right? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 1. And let's start over about verse 18. And again, I can't tell you. I looked today, and I'm going to do a little further research. And if somebody knows the answer to this, I can't tell you who exactly told Joseph that Mary was pregnant and going to have a child and was going to have this child. I don't know whether Mary told him, whether an angel told him. I'm not exactly who told Joseph about this. I can't find a verse that just says Mary said to Joseph that I'm pregnant or an angel told him or exactly how this came about. But anyway, Joseph knows about it because he's pondering it in his mind. I know that he knows about it. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Again. Never before in the history of mankind had there been a daddy that the dad was the Holy Spirit. Never again after the birth of Jesus Christ had there ever been a child conceived of the Holy Spirit. We're celebrating today on the 25th day of December 
the birth of the one and only Jesus Christ, born, conceived of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. That sets him apart from any other. Allah, Muhammad, all the other gods that are worshipped on the face of this earth, there is none other but Jesus Christ. None other that was born of God. None other. They can't, they can't claim this verse. None other can claim this verse. It was Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, so he knew it, was minded to put her away secretly. He was wanting to do the right thing. I don't want to embarrass her. I don't want to embarrass her family. I just want to put her away. I want to put her away secretly. I don't want it to be an embarrassment to her. I don't want it to be an embarrassment to her family. She's pregnant. <coughs> I know that I'm not the dad. I just want to put her away. And I want to do it in a private manner that will do the least embarrassment to everybody around. That's what I want to do. But while, in verse 20, while he thought on these things as to how can I do this in the least embarrassing way, how can I do this? Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to your Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> now, Randall Kennedy, if you had a dream like that and you knew Sylvia was pregnant, <laughs> he's got a pistol up to her head right now saying, I believe every word of it. <laughs> Man, I know how men's thoughts run. Do you see how God is such an awesome God? Remember, Mary said, nothing's impossible with God. See, God had this all worked out. I'm going to let Joseph go to sleep because he's pondering about this thing. And I'm going to set him down with an angel and I'm going to talk to him about this thing. I want to tell him, Joseph, don't worry about this. She hadn't been with another man. I sent the Holy Bible from the table. The Holy Spirit's conceived that child in that way. And I can't imagine what kind of walk that Joseph must have had with God. Because he didn't stop there, the angel did, and said, that child, Joseph, that's conceived of the Holy Spirit, listen to what else the angel said here. She's going to bring forth a son She's going to call his name Jesus. And this is the reason he's going to call him Jesus. He's going to save his people from their sins. Wow. Every one of us ought to be shouting hallelujah because you know how you got saved from your sins and how I got saved from my sins. It was because of a man that got born today named Jesus. You didn't make it any other way except by the blood of Jesus Christ. By grace through faith are you saved, not of works lest any man should boast. You didn't make it on your own. You didn't read your Bible enough. You didn't pray enough. You didn't go to church enough. You didn't do anything enough. The only thing you did enough was put your faith and trust in one man that we're celebrating his birthday today, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's the only way you've got a right relationship with God today is through that man, Jesus Christ. That angel said, hang on, Joseph. That that's conceived in your spouse, 
that that's conceived in that lady that you're engaged to. It's conceived of the Holy Spirit of God. And I want to tell you something. He, it's a son, and his name's going to be called Jesus. And the reason his name's going to be called Jesus because he's going to save people from their sins. So all this was done that it might both be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, this goes back to Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Behold the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Which is translated God with Think about it. God with us. What happened on the night that Mary gave birth to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in that stable? God with us in the man, Jesus Christ. I can't wrap my brain around that. That's just almost more than I can comprehend. God with us, Emmanuel. Then Joseph rose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her. Till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called him Jesus. Wow. Is that not amazing? We've heard that story over and over and over again, but is it not amazing? Is it not miraculous? Is it not beautiful? To me, it just becomes more precious every time that I hear that story over and over again. I was going to read, and I hope you'll go home and read it tonight or tomorrow. I was going to read you, just start reading in the second chapter of Matthew. Because it talks about how this is a little further on in the life of Jesus where the three wise men started over to, to worship him. No King Herod called him over the side and said, Hey, I want to know where he's at so I can go worship him. But all he was wanting to do was find Jesus and kill him. But God had a plan, didn't he? Because when they got over there, an angel appeared, told the wise men, said, Don't go back over and tell him. Don't go back that way. So they went back another way and Herod killed from two years old down trying to find Jesus and kill him. But another angel had already spoke to Joseph and said, get Jesus out of here. Wow. The story just gets better and better and better about how God took care of Jesus so that he could be our sin for us so that we could have a right relationship with God. What an amazing God to send forth his son Jesus through Mary. That's what we're celebrating today is Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Let's stand together and we'll be just Miss Pat, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Thank you.